the first focus that we had as the, the crisis broke was really to keep the wheels of trade uh, churning. The first challenge was to move from an essentially office-based uh, setup to, to having a real home-based uh, setup from both our traditional agencies, our headquarters, but also our resource centers uh, in India and China and the Philippines. That we've been able to, to do uh, without any impact to, to customers. Operations have kept on being fluid uh, across the different products that, that we offer. Uh, the ships were able to, to sail, the ports were able to operate, warehouses were able to operate, logistics being considered an essential service across the globe has really, really helped us keep the wheels uh, churning all the way. It was very important early on to, uh, to make sure that everybody in the team understood that as we were moving into virtual war rooms and, and coping with the many changes, that the temptation could be to hunker down and become very inward focused uh, as you deal with, with the crisis. And we made the deliberate choice to actually constantly uh, push out communication and be, be much more outward looking. Global trade is a community of participants. This is not just us facing a crisis. All of our customers are facing a crisis as well. Some of their retail outlets are closed. Some of their supply chains are disrupted. This is the moment where they need to be able to relay on their vendors, on their partners, to make sure that they can weather the challenge. So it was not just about us weathering the challenge, but always about us weathering the challenge together with our customers to make sure that we really have uh, all aspects taken care of here. As this crisis has, uh, has been unfolding, uh, we've seen uh, quite a few new needs uh, ap appearing. We've seen customers uh, needing supply chain to accelerate and we've seen customers needing supply chain to decelerate. As the economies reopen across, across the globe, uh, we can expect that there would be another wave of needs. There will be surprises with some products that rebound a lot faster than others, certain lines uh, that, that have a return to normal that is much faster than others. None of that can be modeled today because we've never really tried uh, anything similar to that. It only underlines the importance of, of scenario planning, the importance of flexibility uh, in, in the planning, uh, but also the importance to remain very, very close to your customers. The strategy that we have had for quite a few years of investing heavily into uh, e-commerce and, and different uh, uh, digital interfaces with, and channels with our customers has been incredibly helpful. From a supply chain perspective, I think that what has, has been really different is the fact that as long as Asia was weathering the pandemic, that was more of a supply shock to, uh, to, uh, to the supply chains in, in general. It was production that had to stop, but the demand for the products was remaining uh, intact. So what we saw is actually a pretty strong rebound as China started to reopen. We saw a pretty strong rebound in, uh, in demand for products and a bit of a catch up uh, for, for what could not have been produced while they were in lockdown uh, to really get produced as, uh, as they came back. The difference is as the, the pandemic spread uh, west is really that now we're seeing more of a demand shock uh, into, into supply chains with a lot of retail outlets uh, being closed, a lot of uh, uh, different sectors of the economy uh, shutting down for a while. And, and here I think for us the, the big question mark is how is this going to rebound as it reopens? Is demand going to come back? You control supply much faster than you control demand. So, so that I think is, is the real uh, big difference. The market has reacted very differently depending on what line of business or, or what verticals uh, your business is in. And we've seen actually this reflected in, uh, in, uh, in the needs of our customers changing widely from having some customers in, in some of the verticals like pharma, like medical supply, like foodstuff, wanting to see their supply chain accelerate as the crisis hit and others in, in retail, in, in, uh, in, uh, in lifestyle, wanting the supply chain to slow down uh, as the crisis hit because they did, not need, uh, they did not need the goods to move to their retail outlet as fast as, as they had. So we have had to cope actually at the same time with demands for more speed and demand for, 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 slower, for slower supply chains, which has really created a need for innovative products and innovative solutions to meet, uh, to meet these, uh, these needs. And this is where I think the strategy that we have of being very transparent, open, and having a, a very live dialogue with, 
with our customers has been extremely helpful, both in them knowing that they had a partner they could trust uh, and, and, and having actually this, this relationship and these discussions around opportunities and how we could make sure that we would deploy our resources in the best possible way to support what they needed. So if you look at the US economy, two thirds of it is, is consumption. And it's, if the consumption comes back after the lockdown, then it will look a lot like what we have experienced in Asia. If it takes longer time to come back, then you know, this is going to be a more protracted uh, recovery. Of course, this disruption for, for a lot of us, the, 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 the closest comparison we have to it is really the financial crisis uh, that happened about 10 years ago, because this is where we saw also a sharp contraction in, uh, in demand and, and it took some time for, for the rebound to, to come about. But that parallel has a lot of validity, but has also areas where, where, where actually there is a lot of differences. I think the big differences in this case is that you have entire parts of societies that have not just slowed down, but they have actually come to a, to a halt. And, and that, uh, to see how this is going to, to be reinstated, how this is going to pick up again on the other side, is not something that we have, that we have tried before. Uh, and that, that creates a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, new problems uh, that, and new challenges that, that we have to solve for. So we, we have had to stretch the extent of our scenario planning to make sure that no matter how this ends up panning out, we are here and we are ready to, to weather it uh, as a company and we are ready to continue to support our customers on the other side. This is certainly not a time for, for companies uh, to, to only uh, hunker down and, and just look at, at the next few weeks. It is really, really key to keep the long beams on and, and to keep on really pushing uh, on, on the elements of the transformation that only get vindicated uh, as you see this crisis uh, unfold. The ability that we have had to cope with all of this challenge in such a short time has been truly uh, inspiring to see. And, and I would say when we look back sometimes, it, it really feels like the crisis has been a lot longer than it has been be just because of the list of things uh, that we have had to do. And, and that, that gives me a tremendous pride uh, to see what, what this organization has been able to, to cope with, with very, very limited planning, very, very limited uh, uh, previous training on, on that type of scenario. This, uh, this has been probably the highest period of change since the invention of the container. Uh, and, and yet, I would say that for the most part, customers would say that the movements of their goods have been by and large uh, unaffected or the, the effect has been quite minimal. The resilience that we have been able to show in, the, in this first part of the crisis, I think is a tribute to the quality of the organization and also builds a lot of confidence in the ability that we will have to continue to meet those challenges uh, here in the nearest future.